thing that we study are mitochondrial disorders. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of our cell. And it's very important in the normal physiologic adaptation to uh, things like muscle hypertrophy even, especially in older adults. Not only does the muscle get bigger, we also get more mitochondria when we do weight training. In addition, in both young and older uh, individuals, when they do exercise training, we get what's called mitochondrial biogenesis, which just means that our mitochondria get more connected, they get larger and more efficient at delivering energy. So we've spent decades studying how nutrition, drugs, and exercise can promote either bigger, stronger muscles and or uh, more fit muscles with more mitochondria. And we've been applying that to a variety of different conditions that result in muscle um, atrophy, which is the shrinking of muscle, and mitochondrial dysfunction. Today, we're going to focus mostly on aging. And the reason we've been interested in aging is really it um, depicts two of these issues. As you probably are aware, when you see uh, very uh, old individuals, they have atrophic or thin muscles. Uh, but if you do a muscle biopsy and you take a look inside, you can see that the mitochondria are dysfunctional. And this uh, goes across a variety of disorders from obesity, diabetes, uh, even immobilization. So if you put your leg in a cast for two weeks, we found that you lose 20% of your mitochondrial capacity. So a lot of the disorders that you see listed here on the left are features of things that many of us will experience, not just those with genetic disorders. And we're trying to find ways uh, to use exercise and nutrition to move people back towards the norm to improve their function. Next slide, please. Oh, I guess I can uh, control them. So what are the mechanisms um, uh, by which uh, muscles age and what happens as we age? So there's something called sarcopenia, which really refers to paucity of flesh. Um, and what this uh, really is operationally defined as a loss of muscle size, which is atrophy and weakness uh, that's uh, more than two standard deviations below age normals. And why this is important is that if your muscles are skinny and weak, it leads to functional impairment, difficulty getting up and uh, downstairs, out of a chair, et cetera. It's estimated that 25% of 90-year-olds have at least three known uh, diseases, which can further impact this. It's known that sarcopenia alone, because of falls and fractures and other things, uh, costs about $40 billion a year in the United States in 2019. And given, um, as you can see from the graphs here on the right, that there's an increasing proportion of our population that's over the age of 65, and that's just going to continue, uh, and you can see projected out here till 2025, these costs are going to increase. Sarcopenia, which limits your function, affects at least 10% uh, of those over age 70, and 30% of those over age 80. So in order to develop countermeasures for aging and sarcopenia, we have to know what are the fundamental mechanisms which cause this. We know that there's a loss of our nerves called uh, denervation, uh, the alpha motor neurons which tell our muscles what to do from our spinal cord, they uh, slowly uh, deteriorate. We lose about 30% of our nerves from age 30 to age 70. Uh, telomeres, which are these uh, little caps on the end of our chromosomes, shorten, and that can slow down the ability of the cell to replicate. Uh, we lose, um, fortunately my arrow slipped a bit there, uh, we have a decrease in what's called protein synthesis and an increase in degradation. There's damage to DNA. And importantly also, there's this process called dysregulated nutrient sensing or anabolic resistance. Normally, uh, especially after we exercise, if we eat protein, we stimulate our protein synthetic pathways, but older adults uh, don't do that with the same uh, robustness. We also know that stem cells uh, become either lower in number or they just don't activate properly. And some of this can be due to a process called oxidative stress, which some of you might be familiar with. So you've probably heard of free radicals and antioxidants. The antioxidants that we have in our body and that we eat can try to mitigate this. There's also impairment in the cells talking to each other through processes called exosomes, chronic inflammation, and there's actually a whole area of aging called inflammaging. And then, as I pointed out, mitochondrial dysfunction, I think, is really at the core of many of these processes. So if we look at mitochondria, not only if they um, um, are not working properly, do we get a decrease in uh, energy production, but other processes that are important for health are affected. So the thing called apoptosis, which is a form of cell death, gets activated. The telomeres become uh, shorter. Uh, the inflammatory pathways are activated. Oxidative stress goes up. And it leads to something called cell senescence, where the cells just become essentially like a zombie and they just don't function properly. 
So what can we do about all of this? And uh, why um, I was asked to talk on this um, talk today is that it's all not doom and gloom. There are things that we can do uh, to improve our function. So one of them is exercise. So many studies, and I just have one here on running because I'm a runner, um, to show how important this is to human health. So this was a study from Northern California where they looked at 539 runners and compared them to 423 controls. Everyone, when they started the study, was at least age 50, and then at 21 years, they looked to see what was the incidence of cancer and death. What they found was 15% of the runners died during that 21-year follow-up, but 34% of the sedentary people died. And this and many other studies, if you put them together, on average, uh, people who regularly exercise get about a four-year lifespan extension and a healthier last uh, four years of life. So there's actually lower cancer risk. This was a huge study looking at over a million people, and they found that almost every cancer um, incidence is lower in those who habitually exercise. The only exceptions are prostate, for reasons we don't understand, and melanoma, probably because people who exercise are outside more and you have more sun exposure. But it's only a small increase for melanoma in spite of the massive increase in sun exposure. So make sure to wear your sunscreen. So we've done some studies uh, where we looked at the benefits of long-term exercise. So this is what we call a master's athlete. So these are people that have been active most of their life. And what we did is we measured their VO2 max. And as you might expect, athletes have a higher VO2 max, which is reflective of your physical fitness and your mitochondria. So in uh, young people, you can see the big increase. Over time, it does decline. And so we can't totally reverse aging. But you can see that the older adults in black here, the active individuals or master's athletes, were still at or slightly above sedentary 20-year-olds. So uh, and a person over 65 uh, is, is healthier from the mitochondrial perspective if they're active regularly than a sedentary youngster. So we did a number of uh, other interesting um, um, uh, samplings. What we did is we looked at uh, skin in particular and a whole bunch of other things, but I'm going to focus on skin. And what we found is that skin health was quite a bit uh, better in the older adults who regularly exercised. And what we found also is uh, when we looked at over an entire lifespan, those who were active had improvements in skin health. So you're probably familiar with what's called the uh, dermis, which is where the collagen is. And you've heard of people getting collagen injections. So what we uh, did is we also took our older adults, this is Lauren McNeil, one of my students, and we studied 32 men and women who were over 65, and we did a skin biopsy before and after three months of endurance training. And what we found was an improvement in the dermis um, respond, uh, that responded to exercise that brought them back almost to that of a young individual. Um, so it's never too late to start. And interestingly, what this shows is that exercise releases factors which influence our whole body. So it's not just our muscles and heart, but many tissues get better with exercise. So I'll just finally finish with weight training. We've been talking about endurance, but interestingly with weight training in young people, everyone knows uh, that that increases muscle size and strength, uh, but traditionally people haven't thought of it as stimulating our mitochondria. So we did a study in 70 year old men and women. We trained them for six months, twice per week, doing standard weight training, starting off fairly um, uh, light and then going right up to what a younger person would do, 75% of their maximum and we did muscle biopsies before and after. And what we found in these individuals was an improvement in their strength um, and uh, also an improvement in mitochondria. Uh, but the other thing that we did in this study is that we also saw whether supplements further enhance this. So we used a supplement called creatine and another thing called conjugated linoleic acid to try and enhance muscle growth and also to reduce body fat. And what we found is during that study, those who trained when they were taking creatine and CLA had more muscle mass gain and more fat mass gain, but also improved mitochondria. So this is the final two slides. What we did is that we wanted to see um, at the whole gene level what was changing. So we did these things called gene arrays, uh, and we looked at the young and old people and the old people before and after exercise. And what we found is that there was a big difference between young and old. Uh, in the older individuals, there was a big uh, suppression of mitochondria. But after uh, the training period, which I just described, with weight training, what we found is that the increase in inflammation and the decrease in mitochondrial function that was seen with aging completely reversed and pretty much went uh, back to that of a young person. 
So with that, a very brief overview of just a tiny bit of what we've done. Uh, these are some of the uh, partners and folks, uh, grad students and collaborators who've contributed to the work. Thank you very much.